On Radio 97, it is Talking Law with Despina Priala. If uh, you missed anything from this week's show or uh, last week's or any time in the last three years, you can check out all of Despina's videos. They're all there on YouTube. Just type in Priala, P-R-I-A-L-A, and you'll find uh, years and years and years. It'll you can you can stream it and you can uh, you can binge watch it on the weekends. <laughs> uh, all of Talking Law from the last three years. Just check it out on YouTube. Thank you, Wayno. And Queensland has been very proactive, like you heard before the break. There, the Sunset Date Law, law the Sunset Date Law Reform has officially been passed to Spina. So, what's the update? We have been so busy in Queensland. I don't know, <laughs> know if there's a, a hidden agenda. Wayne, there's what do you think? Not a not a state election coming up by any da, chance. Da, da. Oh, I hear there is. Yes. Yeah. So uh, you know, there's been lots of laws passed uh towards the end of the year. It's amazing. So um these laws again have not got royal assent. So very quickly, royal assent is when you know the uh the sovereign, which we still are answerable to, um, in theory, of course, um, still gives the green tick. So uh, we have to get these uh, bills that have been passed now um, to get the royal assent. Once it's a royal assented to, uh, then it becomes an act of parliament. So not in yet. But what is exciting about these sunset date uh, changes and the laws that have been passed now, which we've talked about on the show many times this year in the build up and lead up. So it's exciting because, yay, it's actually been passed. So um, how does this affect uh, the community out there? So we want to talk about that. Now, with these changes, they also passed other many other changes for bodies corporate, uh, existing ones. Um, so, for example, we've got the laws now passed in relation to secondhand smoke. So you can now put bylaws in your community title scheme to uh, ban smoking on um, outdoor areas, including balconies in an apartment and including courtyards. OK, mm -hmm. in your, um, you know, duplex or townhouse. So that's really exciting. Um, secondhand smoke has been a big issue in community title schemes. And now that's actually been passed. Um, lots of people will be happy about that. Um, of course, the other big one that have been uh, that's been talked about a lot in the media is the um, uh, the ability to now have 75 percent of lot owners give the big vote to say, you know what, we're going to sell out because the building's, you know, dilapidated and they call it an economical viable resolution that can be passed now once we get the royal assent. So before it was 100% votes, now the 75%, yes, it's been passed. So that's also exciting as to how that's going to play out in years to come. I don't know. We could have disasters like we've seen in New South Wales. We're currently seeing what's happening down there and there's some problems with those laws. But anyway, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. But let's get back to the sunset date uh, laws that have passed because that's really exciting, particularly for us because we're in the off-the-plan space. So first of all, what I want to say is it does not apply to all off-the-plan contracts. So these laws that have passed the government, in their infinite wisdom, thought it was best that the laws that are passed only apply to land subdivisions. So if you're out there and you know that you're under contract right now for buying a block of land, right, and it hasn't yet been completed, um, the developer is still going through and doing their civil works and all the things that they need to do to actually get it completed. So you're not buying a high-rise apartment, you know, um, anything that's being built, you're buying land off the plan, this is going to impact you. And the reason we say that is the laws are passed, but they're retrospective. Mm. So it will affect every person that is currently under a contract or someone that is about to sign a contract um, off the plan for that block of land. So really, really important to understand that. Now, what are the changes? Okay, so when you get to the end of the sunset date in Queensland, it's only 18 months. It is a short time frame for land subdivision, but then it makes sense because they're not really building anything on it. They're just doing civils and getting the, the earthworks ready, et cetera, for you to build yourself. So uh, what happens previously is that, uh, and that's why these laws have been uh, brought about, the developer got to the end of the 18 months and they just said, okay, we, we haven't completed, we can't complete for whatever reason, we don't need to tell you, uh, we're just going to terminate. And developers have terminated and then they've resold the lots. Now, not all of them, right? This is not an attack on developers, but some developers that have hit the media headlines have just terminated and then immediately resold the lots at a higher price. So people that were under contract have missed out 
on a particular price point to eventually build their dream home. Yep, and that and, was horrifying. And of course, of course, uh, the once they go back into you know look look for new buyers, uh, then they'll be more expensive, won't they? They won't. They oh, certainly 100%, won't. percent. One hundred percent. Yes. So um, this was overhauled in New South Wales many years ago. So Queensland has finally piped up and listened to what's been happening out there in the community and said, you know what, that's not fair, that's not right. We're going to follow New South Wales. So now what the laws have said is developers cannot just terminate any more at the end of a sunset date period. So at the end of that 18 months, developer cannot just go, okay, we're terminating. That will no longer be allowed. So really important. That's number one. Number two, what the developer has to do if they cannot complete by the 18 months, is they have to send a notice to the buyer. So 28 days before the end of that 18 months, they have to send a notice to the buyer and say, well, we can't complete. And these are the reasons why. So the buyer will either um, have a choice of agreeing, yes, let's terminate. Don't know why a buyer would want to agree, but maybe there's circumstances where the buyer just doesn't want to go ahead anymore. Maybe yeah. they can't get their funding, who knows? So there is the option for the buyer to simply consent. However, if the buyer doesn't want to consent, this is the clincher, the developer then has to go to the Supreme Court at its cost to get a Supreme Court order. And to get that order, they have to justify, they have to explain what has been going on with this project. Why haven't they been able to reach and why they don't think they'll be able to finish. So that's really significant, which we haven't ever had so it's really been probably um, one of the most significant changes uh, to property again in Queensland uh, since I think it was 1984 when the Land Sales Act actually came about in Queensland. Mm -hmm. Many Very minimal changes since, and that's the act that governs land sales off the plan. So 1984 to now, it's a long time. So could they use excuses like uh, weather, for example, you know, really long, uh, bad rainfall and things like that? Um, what, what sort of excuses might they use? Yes, potentially, but you can't just come out and say it's the weather. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have to provide an extensive reason um, mm -hmm. as to, well, why was why is the weather a big delay event? How much rain period did we have? Um, so, it, you know, it's not just a one-liner. They're going to have to give reports of some kind. As to what that will look like, it will be interesting because they are new laws. So until it's tested in the court, like everything, we won't know exactly what the court's and how the courts will interpret the legislation. So again, um, we have two-stage process. The laws have been passed, great. As to how they're enforced and how they will be used is the second step in that process. And that will come over a period of time once we see people take the developers to task, make them go to the Supreme Court and get the orders. We've, we've seen it happen in New South Wales. So there are benchmarks. There are cases in New South Wales, uh, many cases where we've seen how the developer has got the order or has not got the order. So Queensland Supreme Courts will um, most definitely be following, I would have thought, what's been happening in New South Wales as a benchmark to see what's going on and, and how they'll approach applications made by the developers. So this is a really big thing. Now, why didn't the government apply it to body corporate off the plan? So big question. Um, I don't agree with it, um, but the government's view as it's put here in various publications at the time is, well, we're going to see how it goes. Um, again, Queensland taking the staggered, staged approach, if you want to call it. Um, but let's see how it goes. And then in a year or two, we're going to review it. And that's what they've said. So they're going to review it to see if it's working or not to then go, OK, well, we're going to now potentially apply it to off the plan for body corporate. So we're talking about apartment, high rise living, mid rise living. And that's there's a bucket of those on the Gold Coast. So when and I will say when I think it's a matter of when, not if when they're passed, no doubt they'll be retrospective as well. That's going to be a massive game changer on the Gold Coast, particularly for buying off the plan. Definitely. But overall, it sounds positive. I think it's a positive change. Mm -hmm. um, but like with any new laws, it's always about, as I said before, how we see it come to uh, to light. Oh, yeah. How are they enforced? How are they applied fairly and equitably? So we'll have to see um, how equitable they end up being. But anyway, it's a good step for Queensland, isn't it? Definitely. A lot going on. Thank you so much for filling us in this morning, Despina. If anyone does have questions about these big law changes or anything else in regards to the law, where can they contact you? 
So they can uh, reach out double five two nine one two nine four, email info at priyalalegal.com.au. And I will say that if you are struggling with your current lawyers or they don't understand these sunset date laws and how it applies and you're not getting anywhere, please reach out to us because we've acted for hundreds, hundreds of buyers on the Gold Coast, particularly on off the plan. We're very much the gurus in this space. So always happy to help um, and take over a matter. Um, and yes, look, we'll put this up on YouTube again at the end of the week. And by all means, join our community Facebook page. Definitely. Breakfast Radio 97. Thank you so much to Spina and Wayne. And we'll do it all again next week. See you then, guys. Are you confused about legal jargon? Do you need legal advice but don't know where to turn? Tune in to Talking Law with Despina Priala every Thursday morning at 8.30 on Radio 97. Despina, a leading lawyer with over 20 years of experience, will demystify the law and provide practical advice to help you navigate legal issues. Whether it's a family matter, a property dispute, or a business concern, Talking Law has got you covered. Don't miss out on this valuable resource. Tune in to Talking Law with Despina Priala every Thursday morning at 8.30 on Radio 97.